What's up guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Rissa B and I work as a clinical laboratory scientist and I have been for a little over a year and a half now. I get a lot of DMs about finding a job in this field. A lot of you guys ask me questions about how to find a job, where to look, how long did it take me, resume tips, if I can review your resume. So in this video, I'm going to show you what I did to find the job and how you guys can find one too. Before we get started, no, I did not graduate from ACLS program. I have a degree in biology and I did not take the ASCP exam, so I am not certified or licensed. The things I'm going to show you in this video will obviously work for someone who's licensed, but it will also work for those who do not have experience or those who don't have their license. Before getting the position that I'm in right now, I did not have any prior lab experience besides anything that I learned from undergrad and my biology degree. So the tips that I will be giving you will be helpful for those who may have their license and don't have experience, who doesn't have experience or doesn't have a license, anything along those lines, these tips will definitely be helpful for you. And I will be showing you guys my screen that way you guys can see exactly what I'm looking at and what you should be looking for when you're searching for these jobs. One good site that I recommend looking on is Indeed. On Indeed, when you search for these jobs, you don't want to get too specific. You want to put in things like laboratory technologist, laboratory scientist. Personally, I wouldn't recommend specifying clinical or medical because you want the pool to be endless as far as jobs goes and you want to increase your range of jobs that you can apply to. You can also Google job openings as well and it will give you a list of jobs in your area. I did use Google when I was on my own personal job search, but I did find that a lot of the times with Google, the jobs aren't as updated as they would be with Indeed. You will see that a lot of the job listings are posted like 30 days ago, 20 days ago, five days ago. They're not as updated as when you look on Indeed where you'll see it'll say updated a day ago, employer is very active, hiring urgently. So I do recommend looking on Indeed and then looking at Google as well, but spend most of your efforts on Indeed or any other job listing site that's similar to Indeed. So I'm going to go on my phone and I'm going to go to Indeed. And you can already see that it's already filtered for like previous searches, but in case yours does not look like this, obviously, I'm going to show you what I'm going to type in and I'm just going to type in laboratory technologist. And as you can see, it asks you for your location. You can put any location if you want. I have mine set to Maryland since that's where I live. But obviously if you're looking to move or you're open to moving, definitely put in different states as well. I found my job when I was living in Las Vegas. So I put in jobs specifically for Maryland. As you can see with this first job recommendation, it says you have matching qualifications. That is because I have an updated resume uploaded to Indeed. So that's very helpful as well as once you make your resume or you can make your resume purely using Indeed. And once you do your job searches, it will let you know if you qualify or it thinks you qualify according to the job description that they have for each job listing. So. Let's look at this one. This one was about 17 days ago, but we're gonna look anyway. It's full time. So the first thing that I want to look for is I wanna look at the qualifications. Before I even read the job description and the time that they have and things like that, the first thing I wanna see is if they are requiring me to have a certification or licensure. So I wanna make sure before I waste my time applying to this job or anything like that, as far as the basic certification goes, I qualify. For this one, they want you to be eligible for certification. So what that basically means is you are currently in a CLS program and eventually you will be taking your exam for certification. So for me, this probably wouldn't work out, so I'm not going to apply to this job. Here's one that says medical technologist opening, full-time, part-time. They are hiring multiple candidates and they're urgently hiring. So let's see what this job description says. Again, I'm going to scroll down and see. Oh, so it's right at the top here. And as you can see, bachelor's is required. Clinical laboratory experience, one year is preferred. That's fine, it's just preferred. And then it says ASCP, AMT, or NCA cert as a medical technologist preferred. Now, because these are not required and they're just referred, preferred. I'm going to scroll down and read the job description because for me, 
that ticks off all the boxes. Even if I didn't have a year experience, again, I would still be interested in this job listing because it's not required. And as you can see here, it says it as well that it's desirable, but not necessary. So this is a job that I would apply to. This one is two days ago, so let's click on this one. Sorry if you guys hear a lot of that like banging, clanking sound. Buster has decided, oh, you guys can't see him. He's decided that he wants to eat right now, so. Okay, so for this job, they want a bachelor's degree and a CLS program or related program. Related program, technically, life sciences falls under that, so biology, chemistry, microbi microbiology, things like that. That's a related program. This one, they want you to have a certification. So unfortunately, we cannot apply to this job. So let's go back and keep looking. If you are looking for a job and you really need a job and you don't have experience, I wouldn't be so picky with anything. I would, if it's active 24 days ago, 15 days ago, I would still open it and apply or open it and read and see if you can apply. But obviously for the sake of time in the video, I'm not going to click on every single job listing that I see. So let's read this one. This one we can see at the top, they want a license. So I'm gonna go back and keep looking. Okay, so let's look at this one. So for this one, they don't mention a certification or license they do want you to have a degree they want you to have like experience with tracking and assessing samples things like that so they want you to have a little bit of experience and experience in a clear laboratory setting to be honest if i was looking for a job and it's my first time i didn't have experience i would apply to this one even when a job is saying you know they want you to have experience here they want you to have experience there blah 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 Yes, it's true, but there's nothing wrong with applying anyways. I mean, but you have a degree and you have some type of lab experience. Personally, I don't see the issue with applying. You can look on Google as well. It's the same type of process. So let's go to Google and here we are. We're on the page with a list of jobs. Mm, let's look at this one. This one isn't necessarily a technologist or technician job. However, it looks like you will be dealing with a specimen in general, I would say this is a good job to apply to to get your foot in the door because you will be in a lab setting, you'll be handling samples, processing data and things like that. And as a technologist, if you guys have seen my on-call video, that's one of the things I do in one of the stations. I accept the samples, I process them, I accession them, I assign them unique identifiers, that way we can always identify them and where they came from, what project they're for, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a good job that I would apply to, especially as an entry level person who's looking for a job just to gain that experience. Here's a job for John Hopkins. And in this one, the minimal qualifications that you absolutely need is a high school diploma and or a GE, well, not and or, or a GED. So they prefer experience in a lab, they prefer you to have um, training certificate from a technical institute or certificate, but again, these are all preferred. This is a job that I would apply to. And this is for a laboratory technician. So a great entry level job, a great job to get your foot in the door and get that experience you need to widen your job availability. So now that I've kind of showed you guys how to actually find the jobs that you were looking for and what you want to apply to, I just wanna go over a couple of tips that will also help you in your job search as well. The biggest question I get in my DMs are about your resume. I did mention resume tips in my video on how I became a clinical laboratory scientist. So I will link that up here, but I will go over a few short ones here as well. So if you don't have any type of experience in a lab setting and you also did not complete a CLS degree, what I did when I was applying, at the top of my resume where I listed my education section and I talked about where I got my degree from, I also listed things that I titled relevant programs and so in that, I was referring to things that I did in my program. And like I said, I was a biology major and I've had multiple different laboratories that I had to take while I was in undergrad. I honestly can't remember what exactly is on my resume, but if it's still fresh in your mind, or even if you have to go back and find old syllabi, go through your syllabi and find relevant pieces that you can add to your resume. You do not want a long conducive list that is like this half of the page. 
No, you wanna narrow it down to what you may think is most important. It should only take up about this much space on your resume and that's it. If you need to modify some things whenever you apply to certain jobs and you see that they're asking for something in the description and you know you've done that in your undergrad career but it's not on your resume, go ahead, take something off add that on there and submit that new resume. The second tip I have is to be patient. I think a lot of people expect to apply to maybe like five jobs, get an interview in like the next two weeks and then get offered a job. For me, especially with someone who didn't have experience or a certification, that's not how it worked. It took me a couple months to find a job. It took me a couple months to even get a couple of interviews. So this is not a short process. So if you've only been applying to jobs for like two weeks and you haven't heard anything back, Please don't DM me because you have not waited long enough at all. I can't attest to how long someone should expect to wait if they have a certification, but I do see a lot of jobs. As you guys also saw, there's a ton of jobs on Indeed and Google, so I would assume that maybe it's a little less of a wait time, but in general, job searches do take a long time. As far as what companies you guys should apply to, if you are applying with no experience, if you're a new grad, all I would say is do not be picky. Just apply, apply, apply. If the job that you apply for, the company you apply for, and you hear back from them, then go ahead and do some research on the company. If it has like a super low rating and like super bad reviews, I definitely wouldn't say like interview with them and just take it unless you want to. But for the most part, if there's nothing wrong with it, you need to just go ahead and take it or interview with them. All right, guys, that's all for this video. I hope the examples and the tips that I gave help you guys on your job search. Let me know how things turn out below. Don't forget to like and comment for this video down below and also subscribe to my channel. Let me know what type of videos you guys would like for me to do next. As always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.